Today's video is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30 day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash magstv or click the link in the video description below. Over 180,000 titles to choose from available for pretty much any device. G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to DCS World with Mags and welcome back aboard the Beastly MiG-29. Yes, today we're continuing our Over the Hump campaign playthrough and we're up to Mission 5. So, in Mission 5 our objective is to directly take out the enemy HQ that is commanding the two airfields that the enemy is occupying on the far side of the hump. The origin point for all of the attacks in enemy aircraft that we've encountered up until this point. We are flight lead of a four-ship flight of MiG-29s and our mission is quite simple. To defend two strike packages heading into the area to take out the enemy HQ. The first to arrive in the area will be an SU-24M on a seed mission. Its objective, obviously, will be to take out the radar installations surrounding both of the runways, blinding the surface-to-air missile defences, and thus opening the door for a second strike package, also an SU-24M that will be coming in directly to eliminate the hostiles HQ. Now over the course of the previous four missions, we've eliminated most of the aircraft based on these runways to begin with. However, there is still a couple of F-4 Phantoms floating around, and these will be the primary threats to the strike packages. Whether or not our flight actually survives is entirely irrelevant to this mission. Those strike packages are the primary defense. If they are eliminated inside of the target zone or at any point during the mission, the mission is an instant failure, but more than that, so is the entire campaign. Now there is a third flight that will be entering the area after the HQ is taken out. This flight consists of two SU-34s, equipped for ground attack and air defense. Once the HQ is taken out, we are clear to leave the area. The SU-34 flight entering the area will then begin to eliminate any remaining aircraft that we have missed operating over the runways before running their own strikes directly against the runways themselves. So, for the most part, this mission seems to be relatively straightforward. It's not. This was both the easiest and the most difficult mission that I've ever had to complete in this campaign up until this point. And it's mostly because of... well, one important mission objective. The SU-24Ms operating as the seed strike package and the ground attack package that will be taking out the HQ cannot be shot down at all. There is no further backup, there is no other way that the mission can be completed, and it's an instant campaign failure if you do have them shot down. And that's a problem, because if you follow the mission waypoints and the mission design, that is nearly impossible to prevent actually happening. The mission waypoints are set out, so you head out to your first waypoint and then turn south towards the runways. This initial flight over the mountain gives time for the first SU-24M, the seed mission SU-24, to fly in and for you to be able to rendezvous with it and escort it into the combat zone. Now this makes logical sense. You meet up with the aircraft you're escorting and you escort them in and then engage any hostile aircraft you encounter, allowing it to complete its mission. The problem is, coming in in that manner, every single hostile aircraft that you face will automatically bull charge the SU-24M, firing every single missile they've got at it, and at least one of those is going to hit. The second it's destroyed, it's a mission failure. After having taken many, many shots at this mission trying to follow the mission profile exactly, I am actually convinced that it is impossible to complete this mission if you do not divert from the mission profile. The only way to complete this mission is to engage the enemy's F-4 Phantoms that will deploy as you approach the runway before the SU-24s arrive in the area to actually perform the seed mission and the attack on the enemy's HQ. And you'll have to pardon my Russian friend speaking in the background, he will speak constantly through this mission. So, attacking the runways before the seed mission can actually get into place is the only way to take out the enemy aircraft before they can actually engage the SU-24s. But that comes with a catch of its own. You're attacking a defended runway that has active surface-to-air missile defences before your seed mission can get into location to eliminate those defences, putting you at risk. 
And that's not to mention the active AAA defences that are operating around the runway itself. That being said, it's still not as dangerous as you may think. Remembering the previous mission that we did, we escorted an aircraft in to perform a seed mission operating in the area. That seed mission was to eliminate radar stations guiding surface-to-air missiles that were covering the mountain range itself. Providing you keep the aircraft over the mountains, the radar stations around the runway seem to have issues tracking you reliably. They will be able to fire missiles at you, but they're in a bad position to do so. Now this gives you a position that you can not only engage these aircraft in relatively close range engagements, but a position from which to deploy your R-77 missiles. These are active radar guided missiles that will be able to lock onto the targets that as they're flying around the airfield and fire on them, providing you can get an accurate radar lock to release the missiles in the first place. Which actually shouldn't be too hard, considering, as you heard, from the constant chatter in the background, we do have an AWACS operating over the mountain range as well that is able to give us bearings to each of our targets. And this is where the easiest mission to complete comes in. Once I diverted from the mission profile and actually went to attack the F-4s directly before the SU-24s arrived in the area to complete their mission, the difficulty level in this became trivial. With no SU-24s to target, the F-4 Phantoms are forced to directly engage your flight, which, providing you attack a single runway at the time and don't approach down the centre to engage both runways, actually gives your flight a numbers advantage in the engagement. Not to mention that with AWACS and long-range or medium-range radar-guided missiles, you have a range advantage over the F-4s as well. At this point I've locked up the first of the F-4 Phantoms from the westernmost runway. I've got solid radar connections to both thanks to the AWACS. I can see where they both are quite comfortably and I'm just waiting to release some missiles. But I was getting a little bit concerned about incomings from the surface-to-air missile defences. So, issue attack orders, pop chaff and flare and push the aircraft into a dive. I figure I'll drop down into the mountains, blinding the SAMs based around the runways themselves, before pulling back into the vertical and engaging the F-4s at close range. But by the time I bring the nose back up to the target, one of my wingmen has already released his R-77 and taken out the first of the F-4s. Second F-4 is breaking around, so into a hard left bank to follow. So helmet targeting is up and I go to lock the F4 after pulling out of the bank but Wingman also got under that one with the missile first and the second F4 is out and that is the defences from the western runway eliminated. Meanwhile as you can hear from the radio chatter aircraft 3 and 4 of the flight have already turned towards the eastern runway and started to engage the F4s deploying from there and at this point have their missiles in the air to kill the last of them. In a matter of seconds before I could even release a missile against a target, my three wingmen were able to eliminate the entire F-4 flight that otherwise would have locked on to the SU-24s as soon as they were in the area and ended the mission for us. And that is about the entire length of the main engagement for this mission. As I said, the second I diverted from the mission profile, the difficulty level of this mission became completely trivial. Now that's not to say that I'm done just yet. The SU-24 on the seed mission still has to arrive in the area and take out the air defences, at which point we can escort it out of the zone and the second SU-24 will come and take out the HQ. At that point we are clear to RTB and we will have to. Because we engaged so early on, we dropped our tanks. And there is the seed mission arriving in the area of operations. So as I was saying, because we engaged the F-4s early, we dropped our tanks as we went to engage. The catch is the MiG-29 doesn't have particularly long legs and we are over 150 k's away from our main runway. We do have well and truly more fuel than is required to actually get home, but we will be burning through it very, very quickly, and we don't have the reserves of the tank anymore, so if we hang around too long, 
the MiG-29 flight is going to start running into fuel issues. So we've got a very limited window here that we can now actually stay. Providing we stay off afterburner, which you know me, I don't, we've got about 10 minutes that we can stay in the operations area before we have to RTB. So at this point, I'm just turning back around and trying to catch up with the SU-24M on the seed mission and pull into an escort position with it. But first, as much as the area is looking clear, quick request for a bogey dope from the AWACS. And we've got a clear, so there are no fighters up or any other hostile aircraft up in this area at the moment. So, let's go find ourselves an SU-24. So it only took us two or three minutes to actually locate our seed aircraft. Funnily enough, it wasn't all that difficult to find. It wasn't exactly going out of its way to be quiet. Now at this point, it's already fired on the SAM sites at the westernmost runway. It's now working towards the easternmost runway. And we've received notification that the second SU-24 coming in to directly attack the HQ has also entered the AO. Currently, the AWACS reports that there are no additional aircraft in the area. Everything that is up is friendly, so we have total control. And just as we're pulling around on our SU-24M missile away, that is on its way to the radar, controlling the surface-to-air missile systems over the eastern runway. So at this point, the SEED aircraft has now completed its mission, and it's getting ready to bug out of the area. And there's the smoke as it comes off afterburn. You can say a lot of things about Russian aircraft, but um, low on pollution and environmentally friendly is most certainly not one of the things that they are. So at this point, there was actually very little to do other than form up with the SU-24 as it exited the area after completing its mission and wait for the HQ to be destroyed on the off chance that any hostile aircraft did happen to spawn in and take a swing at these planes, as they are still mission objectives and they are still required for us to keep alive. And I really do like the look of the SU-24. I'm sort of hoping this is an aircraft that at some point becomes available as an actual module in DCS. The SU-24 NATO reporting name Fencer is a supersonic ground attack aircraft. It's basically the Soviet's version of the F-111 Aardvark. Much like the Aardvark, the Fencer has a side-by-side -side configuration for pilot and co-pilot, with other similarities to the F-111 including a twin-engine setup, a variable geometry wing, and even carrying a very similar maximum load, with the Fencer being able to get up to 43 tons maximum weight to the Aardvark's 45. This is Center HQ has been destroyed. Now let's get out of here. Ah. And that's it, mission complete. We've just been cleared to RTB. So, what's different between the Fencer and the F 111? Well, honestly, everything else. The F 111 has a longer range by over a thousand kilometers, a higher maximum altitude. It is significantly faster with a Mach 1.2 maximum speed at low altitudes and at high altitudes being able to get it to Mach 2.5, a speed that is unattainable by the Fencer. In all honesty, I would actually like to see both aircraft put into the game. I think the Fencer and the Aardvark would be interesting to fly, especially with DCS multi crew being available. Anyway, at this point in the mission, we've been cleared for RTB, so rather than having the entire flight come back with me, I just order them to break off and make their own way home and begin my own cruise across the mountains. Now, AWACS does report a second flight of F-4 Phantoms entering the area. However, at this point, our entire flight is bingo fuel, so we cannot afford to turn back to engage. However, those SU-34s that we mentioned before are now just entering the area. So I'm just going to exit the area and let them handle the cleanup. And as you would imagine, with the enemy HQ destroyed, its air defences neutralised, and its air power either destroyed or forced out of the area, the flight home across the hump was rather uneventful. 
I'm the first of my flight to make it back to base and I am now on final approach to come in for landing. So, as I'm sure everyone noticed at the start of the video, I now have a sponsor for the channel. I am now sponsored by Audible. Audible is a company that provides audiobooks at a quite a reasonable cost with a huge selection available online. It's run by Amazon and honestly I've been a customer of these guys for a while so when I received an offer to actually have them sponsor me, I couldn't turn it down. It's actually a product that I very, very much believe in. Right now I'm actually listening to the audiobook A Higher Call. I am sure some of you may have heard of this one. It's a story of German 109 ace Franz Stigler and B-17 pilot Charlie Brown's encounter during World War II and what followed. And it's absolutely fantastic and I do very, very much recommend it. Anyways, if you would like to check this out for yourself, head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash magstv or otherwise click the link in the video description below and grab your free trial and credit for a free audiobook of your choice. Doing so will get you a nice freebie and help out myself and the channel. Otherwise, if you'd like to help support the channel directly, please feel free to check out my Patreon below. Links also in the video description. Anyways, ladies and gents, until next time, click that like button if you do, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.